Second oral question, Lord Young of Cookham. Uh, my Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. Delivering new homes and regenerating left behind communities are central to our levelling up mission and we remain committed to our ambition of delivering 300,000 homes a year. We've made progress with more than 2 million additional homes being delivered since April 2010 and over 242,000 homes were delivered from April 2019 to March 2020, the highest level for over 30 years. Uh, I'm grateful to my noble friend. The Construction Industry Training Board has forecast that we need an additional 266,000 constru construction workers over the next three years if demand is to be met. And that's in an industry already facing shortages. So what action can my noble friend take to see that those numbers are met? And if there is to be a uh, shortfall in output, can he ensure that that does not fall on the affordable sector of the market? Well, my noble friend is right. There has been a recent report by the CITB, but I point out that that shortfall is for the whole of the construction industry, not just housing, and we have significant cross-government intervention and investment in skills, and the CITB made £110 million available in training grants uh, to support uh, 14,000 uh, businesses, and we continue to recognise, though, that there will be, uh, and this is picked up by the Federation of Master Builders, there are stresses and strains, uh, both in terms of labour but also in materials that the government's working hard to overcome. Trust, as Chair of the National Housing Federation, which estimates that we need 90,000 social homes a year in England, can the Minister tell us how the government will ensure that its reforms in the planning system contained in the Leveling Up and Regeneration Bill will help to deliver that much-needed social housing. Well, my Lords, um, there is a real commitment to build uh, more social housing, including more affordable housing. The programme, as the Nil Baroness knows, is some 11.5 billion, with a target of doubling the amount of social rented homes in this particular grant period than in the previous one. Um, and the Leveling Up Regeneration Bill uh, recognises that in order to get the housing, we need the infrastructure in place uh, and also to ensure that the neighbourhoods that have mixed communities are right at its heart. And that's what the bill is planning to do. All the new houses will be built with a high level of insulation, the quality of which is properly inspected and will not be fitted with gas boilers but will be heated by renewable energy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my Lords, we recognise that we, in order to meet our net zero commitment, we do need to. to um, implement the future home standards which comes in I believe in 2025 um, and of course building regulations will reflect that ambition to ensure that we not only build uh, more homes but we build more sustainable homes uh, that use heat pumps and other uh, devices that meet that target. Development Corporation Board and my noble friend would he, my noble friend agree there are many public bodies that would be willing to get on delivering homes if they had access to the um, uh, the Brownfield Infrastructure Land Fund, uh, nearly three months into the financial year, is my noble friend able to say when the allocations from that fund are going to be announced? Sorry. Um, my Lords, uh, I'd point out to my noble friend that £550 million has been allocated to seven mayoral combined authorities, but we do recognise that we do need to announce the availability of funding for smaller Brownfield sites, and that will happen very shortly. My Lord. The, the Noble Lord, the Minister, will know that half of all of the affordable housing that, that is produced annually within the 300,000 target, half of it comes from the planning obligations on the house builders. Uh, can he reassure the House that the planning reforms in the levelling up bill will not diminish the amount of affordable housing which the house builders have to produce, since we need to double the output of affordable housing and not halve it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I can uh, give the assurance that the, the, the levelling up regeneration bill recognises the role of building more housing and including more affordable housing and what we're trying to do is ensure that there's a more uh, uh, transparent approach with regard to the levy and there's a reform around um, the current community infrastructure levy to get that right uh, to make sure that we do get a proper contribution to affordable housing in the coming years. My Lords, has there been a detailed assessment of the decision by Mrs Thatcher to sell off council houses 40 years ago in the light of chronic shortage of houses for sale and for rent at affordable prices? And is the government positively encouraging local authorities to increase their public housing stock? 
My Lord, um, I can, I can, we can uh, prima facie assess that two million people chose to buy their own council home and are now homeowners as a result of that, and that's something that we make no apology for. But what we want to make sure is that in spreading over the, the, spreading the ability for housing association tenants to buy their own homes, that we design the scheme in a way that enables the homes sold to be replaced on a one-for-one -one basis. I think that's something that everyone can get behind. Yeah. My noble friend, time, that an unbelievable time, one million people time. were given the right to come and settle in this country last year. Even if we assume that 300,000 return or emigrate, can he confirm that the remainder, even if they occupy the houses at twice the density of the indigenous population, will use up half the houses we build every year? Uh, my Lords, I recognise that this has been a very welcoming country. Um, we have welcomed uh, uh, refugees from Afghanistan, and there's a very successful programme. We've welcomed um, British uh, Hong Kongers to this country, and make no apologies for that. And we do recognise that there is a need to hit our uh, new, new build housing targets, uh, and that those are going to be homes for uh, people that, for, that have come to this country for a better life, but also uh, we need homes for, uh, for, our, for the younger generations as well. Lords, um, the House Building Index that's produced by the Chartered Institute of Procurement and Supply found that last month residential construction had slowed down to levels last seen during the first COVID lockdown. Can I ask the Noble Lord the Minister what assessment he's made of the impact this will have on house prices and private rents? Well, I, um, I, I don't recognise the cataclysmic drop since the pandemic. We did hit a record number, um, as I pointed out, in 2020-21. There was a slight falling back, um, but all our internal assessments are that we're, you know, we, 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 we will see a, a rebound uh, and that this um, dip this year is not something that will be pronounced or continue into the mid-decades. Mid it's a stretching target to hit, hit 300,000, uh, but we're going to see increasing numbers in the years to come. Bishop. Bishop. <laughs> That's happened for the first time. My Lords, thank you for... Uh, just to ask a question of the, my Lord the Minister, um, is it possible for a developer to pay the local authority a certain sum of money to be relieved of their responsibility and for that local authority then to use the money elsewhere? I hear that is happening in other parts of the country. Uh, my Lords, uh, I don't recognise that you can discharge your responsibility. That's almost describing a a bung. I don't think that's the, what happens. What you can do is, if there's an affordable housing requirement, you can choose to discharge that off-site, um, but you still have that requirement and to deliver that. And you see that in some areas where there's very high-value housing, and it's simply more economic to build that um, elsewhere. But I don't recognise that. But if you have specific examples, I'm happy to look into that. My Lord, is it not time that we had a meaning? The same. Cross bench. Cross bench. Thank you. It is said that pressure on housing supply is often at the expense of regional and, and, uh, e regional and national economic uh, uh, development, and that government departments work on their own strategies in silos to the detriment of the broader strategies. Could the Minister give assurance that this is not the case and will take up the cause, of, uh, take up the cause if evidence is presented uh, to the contrary? Well, I do recognise that you can't look at housing in isolation, that we do need to get investment uh, in the infrastructures and, and, uh, and other, other factors in order to allow for growth. But uh, you know, it's a good start to have a 10 billion investment in housing supply since the start of this uh, parliament, but also there's an investment um, on, to enable the brownfield sites to be, uh, to be, to, to be built out rather than uh, the sometimes easier greenfield sites. We, don't, we want to see uh, uh, brownfield development, and that does require infrastructure, and the money is in place to do precisely Lord, that. Is it not time we had a meaningful new town? For new towns uh, project, uh, which would benefit both owner occupation and social housing throughout the United Kingdom? Well, I do think uh, we need to find ways of coming up with new town projects, but to do that, we do need the infrastructure, we do need the transport, we do need the roads, we do need the rail, and that's why uh, we, you know, we recognise that a programme just to build homes is not enough. We need to get that in the round, and that's something that we're taking forward as part of the levelling up and regeneration bill in this uh, session. My Lords, uh, I was very pleased to hear the Noble Lord the Minister say last night enthusiastically that we need more affordable housing and social housing and that the Government was happy to look at ideas. 
Um, there are currently 500 projects uh, for community land trust homes, creating 7,000 new homes around the country. Will the government look at trying to ensure that this method of providing homes in perpetuity of a structure and type decided by local communities for local communities, will the government look at how it can encourage this model further? Yeah, no, I think there's quite a degree of um, interest in how community land trusts can operate um, and we're happy to look at you know coin street as an example and there are other examples i believe in watford and we're happy to take all ideas including how we can use community land trusts as a vehicle to de de deliver uh, more affordable housing <laughs>